Here I'm going to show you a workflow which allows you to copy a calendar event and make modifications to the new version of it. So the first thing that we've got here is a find calendar events where, and we've just done a very simple filter. It's the default filter offered by workflow, which is the start date of this event is in the next seven days. The next action is to choose from a list. So this is ideal if you've got lots of calendar events coming up, you just choose that one calendar event that you want to make a copy of. And then the very last option is to add a new event. Now, as you can probably see here, for nearly every single one of these items, I have two variables or variable type actions in this workflow. So the very first line for the title, we've got the chosen item title and ask when run. So what I've done here is these are magic variables. So the magic variable is essentially I'm saying, right, I don't want to actually explicitly say the calendar event that I have chosen is my chosen event because it's implicitly there. It's created automatically by workflow and allows me to grab it. So what I'm doing is if I click on reveal action, you can see it's highlighting the choose from list uh, action in my workflow. So I've just done and I'm going to show you here at the bottom exactly what I've done. So you can see chosen item. If I've tapped in a field, a text field, chosen item is a suggested variable because that's the last variable that workflow created for me. Now, if I just do that, it then offers me some options. By default, the title is selected, but I could have the start date, the end date is all day. So if it's an all day event, uh, that would be an, an option. Uh, the calendar, the location, the alarms, duration, all sorts of things. So I've used this information from the existing calendar event to fill in the title, the location, the calendar, the start date, the end date, and the notes. Now, what I have done is the calendar. I'm assuming that if you have something on one calendar, when you copy it, you're going to want to put it on the same calendar again. If that's not the case, then you will need to do an ask when run because workflow will only let you select specific calendars. Um, but if you do the ask when run, then it will ask you in a drop down. So I'm going to run the workflow and show you how it works. So the very first thing is I've only got one event in the next seven days. I have a cake testing festival at 9am tomorrow. Well, that's brilliant because the cake testing festival is actually going to happen again. Same time next year. Brilliant. Love cakes. So what I've got here is, as you can see, the title and everything is filled in. So I'm just going to add 2019 here. So I know that that's the 2019 version of the Cake Testing Festival. And I'm just going to modify the dates. Now, as you can see, the dates fields here are actually text options. They're not the traditional uh, wheels of time as are used many places in iOS. Now, as you can see, Google Calendar has added a bunch of rubbish into the notes there, which I don't want. So I'm just going to delete that. And I've got all the information here. And if I just press done, then you can see I've got a nice calendar event, Cake Testing Festival 2019 in my calendar. Now, this is all very well, but if you're like me, it's quite often you have an appointment. And when you're at that appointment or you're leaving that appointment, somebody says, so shall we arrange the next one then? This happens a lot in meetings at work, for example. So what you can do here is you can say the start date is today and just filter for events that are happening today. So as you can see today, I went shopping for the Batmobile. Now, in this case, where I went shopping for the Batmobile, they would like me to come in and do a test drive. Wonderful. Everybody wants a Batmobile. So now I just need to change the title here. Test drive the Batmobile. And I'm going to be doing that. Oh, let's say I'll do that at the end of next month. So let's just pop that in make those changes and tap done. And as you can see, 30th of July, 2018 has test drive the Batmobile. Of course, you might want to say that the start date is in the last, for example, week, and you can do exactly the same thing again. So as you can see here, I've got two events, one that happened yesterday and one that's happening today or one that has happened today because it's in the past, in time before now, it's counted as in the last seven days. It doesn't explicitly start yesterday. It starts at any time before now. So that's that. You could enhance this and you could actually add a repeat with each block here and put the add new event in. And then if you do that, then what you would need to do is replace the chosen item 
with repeat item and do that for all of your variables. This workflow is available for download at automators.fm and at rosemaryorchard.com. Enjoy. <laughs>